I have to be brutally honest here. There is something about good notes that will make Android users furious and I have to. When it comes to the Android version of good notes, well, it's not really an Android version as in it's not a native app for Android. When I take a screenshot in good notes on my Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus, take a look at what shows up at the bottom. It will either show Google Chrome or Samsung internet. Not good notes, but the name of your default browser. Now let me show you what I mean. When I screenshot any other app, whether it's Samsung notes, notion or anything else, it shows the actual app name that's how android works but in good notes it's either samsung internet or google chrome every single time you know what that means right you're not using a real android app it simply means your notes will take quite a while to load the ai features are missing and you'll probably face quite a lot of latency while writing well don't get me wrong good notes for ipad is absolutely incredible it offers one of the best note taking experiences with smooth writing and fantastic features i genuinely love using it and it's also the one i use myself for planning my day as in my daily tasks and stuff. And yet, GoodNotes still expect us Android users to pay for a web app. And honestly, that's just sad. My name is Prithviraj and let's take a deep dive in GoodNotes for Android in 2025. Well, in case anyone from the GoodNotes team is watching this video, I must say I absolutely love your app, for the iPad that is. But I request you, please get us a stable native version for Android devices as well. We Android users are still waiting. Now here's what changed since my 2024 review. The good news is that GoodNotes for Android is now available on every Android tablet. Earlier, it was only access on Samsung devices. Now you can simply download it from the Play Store. That's definitely a progress, but the fundamental problem remains the same in 2025. That's becoming even more unacceptable. Before we dive into the issues, let's talk about what GoodNotes has actually improved this year. They have been quite busy with updates. GoodNotes also have added features that Android users have been begging for. We now have stroke stabilization and line straightening. These are the features that will make your handwriting look cleaner and more polished. The scribble to erase feature is finally here on Android. Now you can simply scribble over your notes and it will erase them. This one was actually one of my favorite features from the iPad version. It's satisfying as hell and I'm glad that they brought it over here. And not only that, with the new updates, GoodNotes even added this chat box where you can directly talk with the AI. It's like having ChatGPT built inside of GoodNotes. It can help you summarize your notes, create key points. You can ask questions about anything and it will give you the answer right within the app. But before we talk about the missing features and the fundamental problems of GoodNotes for Android, let's take a look at the current state of this app. Ignoring all the philosophical problems for a moment. If you had to use GoodNotes for Android right now, then how does it actually perform? The UI is still really well designed, it's easy to navigate, and everything you need is super accessible. Creating notebooks is straightforward, and you get plenty of page options, ruled, dotted, blank, whatever you need. And we can also select from different page covers. This is gonna help us customize our notes and make it our own. All the tools you need to take notes are present here on the menu bar on top, and that makes everything readily accessible. The pen options are solid. You have fountain pen, ball pen, brush pen, and you can adjust colors using the color wheel of course. The pressure sensitivity adjustment works well enough. Also the organizational system is actually quite good. You can create folders, customize them with different colors and rather you can even add icons now. The folder nesting is genuinely helpful for keeping everything organized. PDF imports work perfectly fine. You can import your textbooks, research papers and annotate them directly. But it can be a bit laggy. We will talk about that in a moment. And speaking of the rest of the tools, the highlighter tool is responsive for most use cases. We can add photos and stickers inside our notes, like I personally use those sticky notes a lot, can be really useful for referencing. The lasso tool can help you make selections, resize, rotate and rearrange your content. The laser pointer tool is still there and it's quite handy for navigating through documents during presentations or for quick reading through your notes. We have the GoodNotes marketplace here where you can download various templates like planners, calendars and stuff like that. Else you can also check out the daily planner template that I created myself. You can simply import the PDF inside GoodNotes and get started right away. It has three different views to choose from daily, weekly, as well as for monthly planning. And also two different themes for both light mode as well as dark mode. I personally use the weekly planner a lot. It gives me a clear idea about what all I need to get done in the entire week. This in hand helps me stay a lot more accountable and boosts my overall productivity. I'll be leaving its link in the description box below the like button. So please check it out if you're interested. But here's where we need to talk about the elephant in the room. All these updates, all these new features, they are still running on a web platform. And that creates problems that no amount of feature updates can fix. While writing with the S Pen, there is still noticeable latency. It's better than last year, but it's nowhere near the buttery smooth experience that you get with GoodNotes for iPad. And that's because the iPad version is a native app and can directly communicate with your hardware. While the Android version has to go through layers of web technology. The scrolling is still jittery. Watch this. I'm simply zooming in and out and it stutters like it's 2015. This is not acceptable in 2025. Especially when apps like Samsung Notes on the same device run silky smooth. This is even more visible when you have notebooks with 
multiple pages of notes or large PDFs, it will take quite a while to load up your content. Now let's talk about what you're missing compared to the iPad version. Because if you're paying nearly the same price, you should get the same features, right? But oh well, the dedicated text tab that makes GoodNotes 6 looks like Microsoft Word, well, that's not here yet. You can add text blocks, but it's not the same polished experience. Wanted to take voice recordings during note taking? Still missing. This is a huge deal breaker for students who record lectures while taking notes. I've gotten so many comments about this feature over the years. It's genuinely helpful for connecting your written notes with the actual audio from your classes or meetings. Rather, they even added a live transcription feature in GoodNotes for the iPad, where it will automatically transcribe whatever you say in real time and convert them into notes. Again, that's missing on Android. The AI spell check that fixes your mistakes in your own handwriting? Nope, not available on Android. The iPad version has this amazing feature where the AI corrects your spelling mistakes while maintaining your writing style. It's like magic, but we Android users don't get that. Well, that's a lot of missing features. So if you're finding this video helpful, then I'd really appreciate if you could consider hitting that subscribe button. And I'll keep pushing for better apps and honest reviews. Now here's the most critical part. How does it actually feel to write on this app? With the S Pen, the writing does feel reasonably smooth most of the time. When it works, it works well. The pressure sensitivity is decent and you can get natural handwriting feel. But, and this is a big but, the latency is still there. Being very honest, it has improved from last year, but it's not gone. When you're writing quickly, you will notice the lag between your pen movement and what actually appears on your screen. It will break the natural flow of your writing. Like take a look, I'm simply wandering around with my S Pen and you can clearly see how the writing is trying hard to follow my hand movement. And the performance issue that I mentioned earlier, they affect the writing as well. Sometimes the app will stutter while you're mid-sentence and that's incredibly frustrating when you're in the zone taking notes during a lecture or simply any meetings. Now let us address the pricing of GoodNotes for Android. GoodNotes 6 costs 9.99 USD per year for a subscription or $29.99 for a one-time purchase on the iPad. That also gives you access to GoodNotes on iPhone as well as on macOS. But here's where it gets interesting. You can create up to three notes for free on the free version of GoodNotes for Android. The Windows and Android version is priced at 6.99 and Rs. 699 here in India. And also Rs. 999 for all platform access, Windows, Android and the entire Apple ecosystem. So you're definitely paying slightly less than the iPad users. But here is the kicker. You are still paying premium pricing for what is essentially a glorified web browser experience. While the pricing might be lower than the full iOS version, but when you consider that you're getting a significantly inferior experience with a lot of missing features, slower performance and web-based limitations, even this reduced price feels hard to justify in Fenge 25. So if you are on Android, you're better off using other alternatives. That will give you a much smoother and better note-taking experience. If you have a Samsung tablet, I still highly recommend trying out Samsung Notes first. It's completely free, fully optimized for Samsung hardware, and honestly, it has 90% of what most people need. Samsung Notes has improved dramatically over the years. It's fast, responsive, has excellent S Pen integration, and costs nothing. I will be creating more dedicated review videos for most such amazing note-taking apps, so please stay tuned for that. And for other Android tablets, there are several alternatives worth considering, like Flexil, Notewise, and the rest. I'll be giving you more options in a moment. But before that, here is my final verdict for 2025. Goodness for Android has improved a lot, but it's still fundamentally flawed. The web platform limitations haven't been solved, just papered over with incremental updates. If you are deeply invested in the GoodNotes ecosystem and need cross-platform sync, then maybe it's worth it. But for most Android users, you are better off with native alternatives that respects your platform as well as your money. So GoodNotes team, if you are watching this, please, please give us a real Android app. Your iPad app is phenomenal. We Android users deserve the same level of respect and love from you guys. Until then, calling this an Android app kind of feels misleading. So if you want to see what are the actual best note-taking apps for Android are in 2025, then click here on this video and over there we have discussed about the note-taking apps that deserve your attention. See you there.